All right, so uh, in today's class, we're going to talk about the human skeletal muscles, adipose and epithelial tissues, uh, other features, autotopology, and hair creation. Um, I'm going to miss lab time, and you guys work. Okay, so uh, generally speaking, we can um, break down human skeletal muscles into three uh, types, okay? Uh, one is cardiac muscles, which is muscles of the heart. That doesn't really matter to us. Another one is smooth muscle, which is your involuntary muscles. Think of like digestion, uh, I think maybe your diaphragm, I'm not sure. But uh, things that you don't control, uh, you know, yourself. And then skeletal muscles are your voluntary muscles, okay? And that's like your bicep and tricep and quads and all that other business. Um, those are the ones that we're going to care about because these two do not... Um, really generally uh, present themselves on the surface of the body uh, so we don't um, we're only worried about the the aesthetic the look uh, externally of the um, of the of the model or the person okay all right um, so the head muscles we have the temporalis which is obviously on the temple area the masseter is the jawbone if you see someone clenching their teeth that's the one that kind of pops out uh, a bit uh, when people get angry, uh, the sternocleidomastoid is the muscle that goes from the sternum, cli um, clido, so the sternum and clavicle, okay? And then mastoid is the mastoid process. That's this bump right here. So actually, um, it's the one that runs right down here. Um, that's the sternocleidomastoid. It creates the pit of the neck. Uh, frontalis is on the frontal bone, which is basically the front of the head here. Um, opicularis oculi. Uh, is around the eye. That's the sphincter muscle around the eye. And opicularis oris is the sphincter muscle around the mouth. Okay. Um, those aren't going to be as important that you see here, but you want your topology generally to follow the way that the body deforms and often uh, what the underlying structure is. So you'll see later on, and actually already when we have already done in class, um, we've tried to uh, basically mimic these loops in our own models. All right. Um, some of the things I would basically tell you is mostly the sternocleidomastoid. You're going to see that it basically goes almost from the back of the head to the front of the chest here. Uh, so you create these nice, strong, you know, I'm sure you've seen them, uh, these nice, strong muscles coming down. Okay. Uh, yeah, I didn't really. Okay. Did I talk about the trapezius? No, I don't know why I put that in there. Okay. Um, the torso, uh, anterior torso, meaning the front, uh, the pectoralis major, that's basically your, your the muscle of your chest here. You know what your pecs are, I'm sure. Uh, serratus anterior are the muscles that, uh, it's these guys here. Um, I'm sure you guys see it right in here. Basically, it's like the ones that kind of go to your side of your um, ribs almost. Um, external obliques. Uh, are basically uh, these guys here, um, and the, uh, let me see, external obliques, oh, I'm sorry, uh, it's uh, these guys here, and then the rectus abdominis is your stomach muscle, okay, so uh, you can always see what we call the linea alba, it's the line that runs down the center of the body, um, the anterior abdominal aponeurosis, uh, basically, you can't really see it here or in any of these. Basically, it's the um, it's a, a sheath-like tendon uh, that's across your stomach. And anterior abdominal, all right, I said that one. And inguinal ligament is the line that basically, right here, um, uh, I, I always call it the ninja turtle. But basically, it's like that, that V shape that's right here. Um, uh, it's naturally created there because you have um, your uh, an uh, anterior superior iliac spine. It's a little bump on the front of your hip here. And then the pubic bone, there's a inguinal ligament that basically runs through them and it creates this this uh, line here, basically just above the genitals. Okay. Uh, it seems to be more prominent, I would say, almost in men. Uh, the torso posterior, we got the erector, er erector spinae group. It's just the back muscles. Um, I don't think this is even going to show them, so that's not going to be helpful. Uh, rhomboids, again, on the back. The latissimus dorsi is this part here, this thing, okay? Uh, and the trapezius is not present in any of these. Does any of these other ones have it? Okay. Uh, this is it. Well, it's not really going to help either. Um, basically, the, the trapezius is the muscle that comes basically off the occipital protuberance. Remember, there's the bump on the back of your head. Um, comes from back there and down to basically where your shoulders are and straight around, uh, 
yeah, they don't really have it here. I thought they did. Um, uh, but it cre creates this nice, you know, if you were to, uh, it, when someone rubs someone's shoulders, like right here, that's your trapezius that they're, they're grabbing a hold of. Okay. It's a very strong muscle. Um, so that's the, uh, trapezius. Um, yeah. And the latissimus dorsi, what I want to get a point about is that on the front, you have this pectoral that kind of flows up and into this, right? And then on the back, you have the, the lat and your arm almost comes out of those two. You see what I'm saying? So you can kind of see the, the, the lat right here and then you see the pec on their side, but the arm almost comes out of it. The main thing you need to think about, um, is that the skeleton itself is almost like an inor inorganic design. Uh, I mean, it's not because it does kind of fit together. But what really makes something look organic is actually our muscles because the muscles flow from one to the other. They inherently have to have a, uh, an origin and an insertion point. Uh, and what that means is that uh, the whole point of a muscle is that it contracts and expands, right? So uh, in order for your arm to move forward, uh, you have to compress, you know, uh, uh, flex your um, your pec muscle, right? And it'll, it'll bulge typically, uh, because it's, it's, um, originating at your sternum and then it inserts into your humerus and it pulls your arm forward. Um, all muscles will, well, yeah, I think so. Uh, all muscles will, at least skeletal muscles, they'll have an origin part and then, um, and one bone and then on a separate bone will be their insertion. Because the whole point is to allow the skeleton to move about. And so you'll see that uh, typically you're going to always see that. So there's always going to be a flow from one muscle to another. Okay. Uh, one thing I also want to make a point about uh, a lot of times people when they do their pecs, they'll kind of come across and then up. They'll almost like it's like Batman or something. They give them like just a square chest shape. It doesn't do that. It actually comes over and it cuts into the humerus um, because the whole point of that pack is to move the humerus and it actually kind of twists and inserts um, laterally into the humerus so it has a longer insertion point and that's why if you hold your arm out like to your side you'll feel like there's like like right after your pack and as you move towards your your arm you'll see there's like a bulge there right like where your armpit is like but you can grab that that's because that's actually where it's like twisting and turning so it always creates kind of a bulge in that area um, I don't really care about that. Okay, so your arm. So you have your deltoid, which is the shoulder here. Uh, biceps brachii, that's the front. Triceps. Um, coracobrachialis is on, I don't think I even have it. It's on the inside here. Okay. Um, you have, there are, uh, I don't even remember how many there are, but there's a bunch of forearm uh, muscles. Then we have pronators and flexors and, ex uh, and, um, for, uh, forearm extensors and also forearm uh, flexors. So a pronator means, you know, if you hold your arm out and you can rotate your wrist, you know, you can roll it, not up and down, but I'm saying like, you know, twist it. Um, those are pronators, right? They call it pronation and supination. So if you open your hand up, your palm, that's supination, like you're making soup. Um, and then if you go the other way, show the back of your hand, uh, like you can hit somebody, um, uh, that is... Uh, um, pronation okay so you have muscles that do that in the forearm you have ones that extend which basically means it's pushing your hand out uh and then flex means you're pulling your hand in okay now some things i kind of want to make a point about is that they work in opposites and so what you're going to notice is that the shoulder again if i hold my arm out the shoulder from the top is going to insert from the you know up above it um and then underneath uh you're gonna have like the caracobrachialis um going underneath it right but then if you look on the opposite end you're going to see the bicep goes uh this way and this way and it creates almost like a chain link because they can't all go in the same direction because they would run into each other you know what i mean so they have to go basically in opposite directions uh not opposite but you know uh 90 degrees and so uh depending on how you look at your arm um, it may look uh, flat round flat or it'll look you know if they if you rotate your arm then it'll look um uh, round, flat, round, right? So you can see there's a part of your bicep that's flat, but if you rotate it this way or make your muscle, you can see it's round there. Uh, but on the opposite, not the opposite end, but on the, you know, 90 degrees across, you'll see that it's again flat. All right. Um, so you kind of want to try and take advantage of that. It creates more of an interesting shape. You see, look, round, straight, round, right? Um, round, straight, round. Uh, and then... <clears throat> Yeah, well, this doesn't look as good, but you get kind of the idea. <coughs> okay. And again, with the idea that the muscles flow into each other. So you see the deltoids coming in here, but then on, on these ends, 
uh, we have the bicep and the tricep, and then you have basically um, your your various uh, muscles coming out of those. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. Do, 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 do. That's good enough for me. Uh, leg muscles. So the gluteus maximus is obviously the butt. The gluteus medius is the like the uh, the side butt. <laughs> um, your quadriceps, you have the vastus lateralis, medialis, uh, intermedius. So um, the latter uh, medialis is on the inside because it's uh, towards the medial edge. The lateralis is this one. And then the medius is or intermedius is actually inside of it. This one on the on the front here, this muscle, that's the rectus femoris. Um, so rectus meaning um, that it's rectangular, right? It's, uh, it's got four insertion, uh, four points and femoris of the um of the uh, femur right and then lateralis outside medialis in uh I'm sorry, yeah medialis inside and then uh intermedius in between um sartorius is this line right here that's this muscle uh and basically what that allows is it creates that nice kind of shape like if you look at a leg you know how it always kind of comes like this and then it bulges that's because that sartorius is coming across and kind of cutting in and it allows you to twist your foot and things like that um, semitendinosus is, you can't see it cause it's, it's basically, it's on the outside here. Um, you know, the rest of these don't really matter so much. Uh, Gracialis. Yeah. Um, the gastrocnemius is basically the big fat muscle here of your calf, uh, which typically you see, but notice that it's not big round ball. It actually, if you look at people who have really like really rocking calves, um, there's actually like a V here. Okay. Uh, behind us is soleus. Um, do, do, do. you get kind of the idea. All right. And, uh, tibialis anterior is just the front where you're this muscle right here of your shin. All right. Uh, but just again, notice that these things are all flowing and that the, the, um, the, these back ones here, uh, so we got the biceps femoris tendinosis and membranosis or whatever. They create this V, right? And that's how you get this pit here. And if you look on the front, we basically have this rectus femoris, uh, the medialis and the lateralis, and you get kind of, you know, there's that bulge right here. So just kind of think about those muscles as you're, you're modeling uh, and just be aware that they exist. And that's kind of why the form is looking the way that it is. Um, all right. So adipose and adip epithelial tissue. I like to show these mice because um, <coughs> when I was younger, my brother was a... Um, I forgot what he was like, neurology something, I don't remember. But uh, he had to basically perform overectomies on these mice, and I helped him uh, do it. I was I was the uh, anest anesthetician. I was doing the anesthetic. Basically, I was just holding on the, the, the you know, the, the sleepy sauce, uh, the, the smoke, so that they wouldn't fall asleep, but make sure they didn't die. Um, but I didn't make a lot of money. I didn't make any money. Uh, but basically, I thought it'd be really cool, and I noticed that when, uh, as soon as I, like, made them knock out they would like kind of go limp and they just look like sacks of nothing uh, but what you notice here with these mice is that notice that this one who's a little bit thinner and stuff and probably a little bit younger um, but doesn't have as much fat notice how he's kind of round but notice that this one when he gets a little bit larger he's more teardrop shaped and so the main thing i really kind of want to get at here is that the the fat and stuff isn't going to be round if you want to do something round that's going to give it a youthful look right you think like a little baby they're all pudgy but if you want to make something um that the skin and the fat will actually kind of sag uh so if you look on the on the back here see you want to kind of do this sort of form and the same thing with like breasts and things as well if you make round breasts uh that's going to look like a fake boob right i mean i'm sure you probably have seen you know porn stars or or people who've had work done they look like that because the the insertion uh, the, the silicone they put inside, um, is a round object and it, it actually looks very superficial in a way, I, you know, you could argue it would make it look more youthful because it doesn't have that sag, but it looks unnatural. Um, so you would actually be more of a, a triangular teardrop shape. And that goes for everything. When you do clothing, um, again, it's going to have, if you look at the wrinkles of clothing, depending on the, on the size of it and the type of cloth, it's actually going to also have that sort of, uh, it's going to look like gravity is affecting it. All right. Um, and when you do skin and you do twists and bends and things like that, make sure that you add those wrinkles, right? And the wrinkles are going to act just like cloth where they're going to, they're going to, they're going to, um, originate from stress points. So if someone's pushing against something or twisting against something, it's going to pull from those. Okay. So make sure that you try to, 
uh, incorporate those as much as possible. Uh, another nice way of making contact is like, you know, if something's pushing against something else, you kind of like to, to really make this butt sit, you know, you add a little bit of a, of a bump to it. It kind of helps. Um, I already said the thing about the epithelial tissue. Okay, so eyes. <coughs> eyes are kind of a tough thing to, to work. Actually, you know what? We just finished that video. Okay, so we're going to call that good on that one, and then I'll do another video for the eyes.